Hi everyone, welcome. I'm out here in my yard and if you've ever been on my channel before looking at how I compost out in my yard, you'll know that what I've got out here is what I refer to as my compost barrel, even though it's just a trash pail. And that whole composting system used to live in this container here until I decided that I wanted to use this container to run a worm bag in. And it's not a real worm bag like you buy from a commercial manufacturer, it's just a grow bag, a fabric grow bag. And since that fabric grow bag running as a worm bag out here once got in invaded by some sort of a little creature that wiped out a large portion of the worm population in the bag, I've been maintaining my outdoor worm bag system in this contraption here where the, uh, the pot rests within here and then this piece of plywood rests on top of that. And that elevates the entire system up off the ground so that whatever little invading creature came in there and ate all the worms last time can't get in again. And it's been really kind of like a mild day, almost, almost spring-like. Even though we've got a couple weeks of winter left, I thought I'd come out here and get my outdoor worm bag back outdoors. Because <laughs> it's been indoors for a while, taking shelter from the cold. And I think the time has come for it to come back outside. So this is the peculiar little portion of my house that used to be the access point for the upstairs apartment. And there's been a new uh, set of stairs built around the other side of the house where the uh, tenants can come and go now. And this is just an obsolete stairwell that I use for storage. And the main thing that's stored over here is the worm bag. So I'm gonna get this thing back out in its place, back out into the fresh air where it belongs, and we're gonna check in on it. Well, we're all set now. The, uh, the bag has been set up in its proper location within the trash pail, elevated off the ground. And it just seems like the safer way to play it because, man, you should have seen it when we came in here. There was little, little tunnels everywhere. Whatever it, is that, whatever it is that had come in here to take advantage of the worm feast made all kinds of tunnels burrowing through, chasing after its prey. And it did a great job preying on these poor wormies because it more or less wiped out the population. This to me seems like some sort of a non-natural fabric. I'm not that picky usually with my outdoor systems, but if I see something that doesn't really belong in a compost barrel, I'll remove it. So now this piece of cardboard is really all that remains of what used to sit out here on the top as sort of a top covering. There was a couple worms over here hanging out enjoying the recirculating moisture that's sort of collecting on that piece of cardboard. So it was only a week ago that we came out here to check on the system, see how it's doing. We found that the material was all extremely flowing, very granular, and it would um, lend itself to easy sifting. We could just run this whole thing through a sifter. We'd have a whole bunch of really nice castings. And I've actually thought about doing exactly that because then out would come all of these <laughs> oddball items like this stick and all these peanut shells that date back years, I would say, at this point. Stuff that's not worth waiting for. What's, um, what's probably a little more practical is just to take all those things and return them into some other composting situation where there's ample dampness and other foods and uh, a little bit more action, you know, because we've been winding this thing down for... 10 weeks now more than 10 weeks actually and the uh actually the the bin's age today is exactly 31 31 weeks of age this is also an object that does not belong so it, it ran for about 20 weeks as a composting bin getting 15 feedings during that time and then past 10 10 or so weeks it's just been foraging breaking down all the remaining lingering bits of leftovers that they can break down Leaving behind, I'm guessing, stuff that really is not not anything that they could really take very good advantage of, at least not right away. You know, I do have another fabric bag just like this downstairs, and it feels like how many handfuls of material would it take to simply scoop out the entire contents of this thing, run it through my sifter really quickly, exclude all the big chunk material, weird stuff like this, and then we really have a, uh, a batch of compost that's really nice. The only thing is that we'd catch a whole bunch of worms in the process within the large chunk material. I don't know, not sure. 
it just it just seems like it would be kind of a cool thing to do but the stuff is a little bit dry i must say it's probably like the perfect environment to like kick off a migration of the worms to get them to move out of this stuff even though we gave this thing a pretty good dousing a week ago it's in a fabric bag and it's you know prone to drying and the material is quite nice i must say but you know what instead of doing all this whole sifting thing it's just something i thought would be interesting my real aim today was to kind of get it out of its foraging phase and get these worms migrating out of this material basically so i set up this little um kind of a baiting station set up out of cardboard i've got some frozen material set aside stuff that my mom bought by the other day that we're going to use as the bait and it'll be the first feeding this system's received in over 10 weeks now 70 some odd days so you know while there's still little scraps of stuff in here that they could probably continue to nibble on i would imagine that the moisture level in here is dropping to the point where um even if they're you know kind of enjoying a yummy morsel of food they're probably going to be more interested in finding a section of the bin that's really nice and damp perhaps a little more cozy than this stuff as it dries out i think this was the uh <laughs> this was the outer skin of a kiwi that we had placed in here long long ago and it's kind of holding together but it's not not left for them to eat on that either at this point there was a good number of worms in here it's kind of cool when you burrow down into the sections of the bin that are protected from drying because it seems like the outer edges are what lose their moisture quickest through the fabric bag but down in the middle you find all kinds of nice damp material and a whole bunch of worms hanging out in it i just keep running into stuff like a plum pit a couple peach pits stuff that i know is never going to go anywhere <laughs> i don't know at some point i think i definitely got to screen this stuff through but i figured you know what why don't we try rounding up worms you know i've got this um box that i created i punctured it full of holes i imagined resting it down here right within the material uh loading it with a bunch of yummy stuff i've even got a piece of cardboard to cover it with and then we could re uh kind of rebury it or you know return some material to the top of it so that worms can approach this thing from all directions and take advantage of the food that's in there and then maybe if we come back in another week or so we'll be able to round up a good number of worms perhaps even consider restarting this outdoor worm system somehow but i think we would need a little bit more of a solid plan to follow <laughs> so i think at that point maybe we would um, kind of haul out whatever worms we've collected and then possibly really screen through this material and collect up all the stuff that still needs more time and maybe re reset this thing somehow i don't know i'm gonna have to think about it but i believe that We've got a good enough hole here. I could probably just head inside now, go grab that little box thing that I created, as well as the um, as well as the foods that I envisioned placing into it, and then we can get this uh, migration started. So this uh, cereal box is what I chopped up into little pieces so the bottom of it is going to become the tray sort of it's full of holes so worms can get into it from below and then I uh, took some of the scrap material that remained and used it as sort of like a um, I don't know I figured I'd create like a little bit of a bedding type material out of it but I thought that the food itself could go right onto the bottom layer of the uh, the container and then we would cover it up with some of this bedding material uh, I took my glove off I should probably put it on at this point I was going to use all of this stuff here too, recycle it as bedding or you know what maybe we'll um maybe we'll drop the, the fresh bedding underneath the food so they can get soaked with all kinds of juices and everything and then we'll take all the recycled bedding stuff and drop that on top and then by then I can grab my glove here's the stuff that I bought in here for for them it's uh what is it it's some apple it's some potato peel and some strawberry tops and there might be some other random stuff in here just a variety of different things my mom contributed the other day so my aim was just to dump it all right in there and then also i've got coffee just uh 
I guess if this stuff had thawed out, I could have probably squeezed it in here a little bit more easily. So I imagine the stuff will settle once it uh, thaws out. I've also got coffee to include with this feeding. And, you know, I'm almost wondering if we should just use the filter itself as a partial cover. And just, like, dump the whole thing right on like that. Because then I've got, um, I mean, I don't know, I guess all this leftover cardboard here was ideally going to just become bedding. I mean, at this point, it probably doesn't matter. I'll just wash my hands afterwards. Luckily, the stuff is pretty dry and flaky, so it'll, uh, it won't stick to my hands, I don't think. Not too badly. So, uh, what do we got here? Some of the foods dropped out of the tray. That's okay. Some of the coffee. Get that back over here. I just imagine that at some point later we can sort of come in here and scoop this whole box out later and um, get a look at how many worms we were able to collect. And, oops, you know what? My other idea was to prevent all kinds of castings from dropping into here. So that was why I held on to another large chunk of the cereal box as sort of a cover and then we can really backfill in such a way that we're not just going to fill up our little baiting station with castings it'll just remain sort of isolated from all that extra stuff and then the uh, the worms can just sneak in through the access little holes everywhere yeah so weird to be plowing through here with my hands because I'm usually gloved up <laughs> it kind of makes me feel like I'd want to go through this whole thing and kind of hand sift everything and move all the big chunks over here and move all the sm small stuff over here. But whatever, I guess at this point I'm going to have to give my hands a good cleaning. So that's official. We're now out of foraging after, I don't know, 73 or so days. And today is actually the bin's uh, 31st week in service. That's 217 days. And... You know, at this point, I'm wondering how long it's going to take for the worms to all come together over here in this collection area. But I've got this feeling it is not, it is not going to take very long at all. So maybe we'll check back in here in another week's time or so. This was interesting, too. I noticed how the worms had come up and started nibbling on this cardboard here. Makes me wonder if the, um, the carbon and the, you know, bedding in the system is really, really running low. If they're tapping into the top covering to get at some sort of a carbon food source to nibble on. So perhaps all that bedding we placed in there with the bait is gonna be a, a welcome food source for them. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I've just got a few things to take care of as far as putting stuff away and getting stuff cleaned up, but I'll take care of that off camera because that's boring. Before I go though, really quickly, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. Very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day.